Hi everyone, and especially our prospective or new ECOS uh, students. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to study ECOS. Uh, I promise to make just a few, but uh, hopefully important remarks. I will not go through all the details of the program, but uh, just to give you an overview and also a few more like general philosophical thoughts, if you wish, on the program, which I hope you will find useful. So if you look at this slide, that's the uh, overview. Um, I hope you familiarized yourself with the curriculum. One would assume that you do that before applying for this program, but perhaps you did that a long time ago and might want to refresh your knowledge. Anyway, um, again, I'm not going through all the details, just um, be aware of the basics. Five modules. Uh, this is also part of our language. So we talk about M1, M2 and so on quite a lot. So um, it does make sense if you familiarize yourself with this and understand what it actually means. So M1 is language, um, M2 and M3 are our economy and politics modules. They are different from M4 in that they um, include mandatory courses, um, seminars, term papers and all that. M4, we called it society because that's really like the broadest of the modules that we have. Courses there are not mandatory. Um, you do have to select a certain number of uh, courses to fulfill your ECTS credit requirements. But uh, this is where we really have a lot of flexibility, where you have a chance to follow your individual interests in your studies and select or deselect certain courses according to this. And then in the end, obviously, the final module, that's the master's thesis consisting of the colloquium preferably to be taken in the third or fourth semester, then the actual master's thesis, and then the very final step is the uh, master's exam or defense or defensio, depending on what kind of terminology you like. And all in all, it's 120 ECTS credits. Let me just remark that um, this is what you need to take, right? Uh, there is no law prohibiting you from taking more. And actually, I strongly recommend that. Um, in Austria, we have this remarkable system of more or less free university education. So you're not taking per course or some, uh, paying per course, you pay your administrative fee. And I understand that for some of you, this is already quite a financial burden. So I don't want to downplay this, but it's nothing comparable to other countries where you pay 20, 30, 40,000 dollars, euros, or whatever the equivalent is per year, or where you have to pay for every course that you take. So. If you find something that you find interesting, let's say in M4, and you have already taken your 20 ECTS credits, so what? If you have the time, if you have the energy, take that course, it will only improve your knowledge, even uh, if it adds ECTS credits that you do not need formally for your graduation, okay? Good, now let's uh, have a look at some of the first steps. So I assume that most of you will be starting our ECOS program in autumn. Um, if you do so, of course, obviously you take M1 or language first. Please be aware that this module will consume a lot of your time and energy, and I dare say actually most of all these modules. Mm, well, might that might vary individually but certainly it's uh, in the in the top list here um well obviously you know learning a language that you're not familiar with and that is also very far away from our uh, european languages that we are usually um learning this is really quite a challenge and uh, you will be there in the same classroom with students who actually have Korean, Japanese, Chinese studies as their major. So they have a very strong motivation for learning the language. They uh, might actually have some previous knowledge. They might have some family connections, etc., etc. So um, this is uh, pretty tough. And our language instructors are also very demanding. They have very clearly, very well structured and developed language programs. And um, yeah, you, you, in order to pass, you really have to learn your vocabulary, you need to know your grammar and all the rest of it. Cheating is also uh, very, very difficult there. Talking yourself out of a situation is very difficult, as it might work perhaps 
um, in uh, more disciplinary oriented courses but for language this is really hard work and uh, also be aware that one language uh, sorry one hour of a language course usually includes four or five hours of homework because you have to you know memorize uh, practice and so on and so on so this is very intense what's also important um, is that you understand the rationale behind this module as being part of our ACOS program. When I designed this ACOS curriculum uh, in 2007, of course I had to think hard of what I want to achieve in two years and what I can achieve in two years. And um, so we find kind of a balance between what's desirable, what's realistic. The ECOS program has been created for students who have previous degrees in non-East Asian studies. That doesn't mean that you're not welcome here if you have a bachelor's degree in Japanese or Chinese or Korean studies, and some of you do. But the main target group for which I created this program is from um, other fields, be it journalism, political science, economics, physics, chemistry, you name it people who already know who they are um, in terms of their profile and who want to add East Asia to that, right? So um, we do not assume any previous knowledge of an East Asian language, and it's actually not part of the program. So, you know, you can easily uh, get through ECOS without really reading a single document in Chinese, Japanese, or Korean. That's not a problem because it's part of the design. We believe that uh, language is much more than just a means of communication, a means of transmitting actual information in a direct way. It's part of a country's, of a society's culture. And this is why we nevertheless thought that language must be included in this program, even though we do not have the goal of making you fluent in any of those languages. Because again, you know, if you even if you study just the basics of Japanese or of Chinese or of Korean, you will have learn so many things about the way how people think, how people structure their thoughts, how people express themselves, and so on and so on. Um, I mean, the obvious difference between an alphabet and uh, signs or uh, characters. And make no mistake, even though Korean, of course, has an alphabet the uh, Hangul, um, nevertheless, there are those Chinese characters hiding right behind it, really lurking pretty much beneath the surface, also influencing, impacting uh, the way how people think. So this is one of the reasons why we included this. Secondly, um, the idea is that this one year of learning a language can be a first step for those of you who really want to acquire a skill in one of these languages. Again, after one year of learning Japanese, uh, I mean, you will be able to say uh, Ohayo gozaimasu in the morning, and um, you might even be able to order a, a bottle of sake somewhere in Tokyo, but that's not really like speaking Japanese, right? If you really want to do that, um, I guess there are many ways of uh, achieving this, including going to Japan, spending time there, and so on. And if this is what you plan, we think that um, having acquired the basic skills at home or in a, in a you know, European environment here at the University of Vienna will actually help you to take the next step. So some of you might just stop there, be happy with saying Annyeong uh, Haseyo in Korean and uh, whatever, introducing yourself briefly and that's it. This will be much appreciated. Others might think, okay, but I really need to learn that language so I can read newspapers, maybe I can I can write letters and so on and so on, give presentations if you're really good. In that case, um, this is a stepping stone, okay? So that is the second uh, reason for including this only one year of language in our program. And then finally, widening the scope I have here on my slide, what does that mean? It means that especially if you previously had a focus on, let's say, China. We want to gently push you in the direction of looking beyond China. <laughs> I know uh, that is not so easy. China especially, I mean, it's pretty big. So, uh, and it's very diverse. Um, but nevertheless, that's why you are not allowed, for example, if you're a graduate of a, a Chinese studies program to actually 
pick Chinese as your language at ECOS. Then you have to take either Japanese or Korean so that you look beyond the borders of what you have so far been dealing with. Um, right? So that's why it's called East Asian Economy and Society. If you want to have Chinese studies light, Japanese studies light or Korean studies light, you can go elsewhere. This is not what we offer. We try to as much as we can, sometimes it works better, sometimes you know, we still try to improve it. We try to offer you really the East Asia package. And uh, part of that is also our idea for the language program that if you have um, formal previous knowledge of one of these East Asian languages, then you should take another one, one that you are not familiar with, to help you uh, discover new territory and uh, new connections maybe even. Okay. So much on the language program. Um, so my recommendation is that you really take this thing first in order to have it done, because it will be very, very, very challenging, demanding, energy consuming, hopefully not too frustrating. Um, and you can, of course, reduce the level of frustration if you understand that it's uh, quite a big uh, burden and uh, not kind of reduce your ability to focus on language by doing too many other things. Students sometimes, and that's of course a good thing, right, tend to be extremely ambitious. If they arrive here, you know, you're full of energy and you really want to get started. Wonderful. But also, you know, be a bit more realistic and uh, you have four semesters. And if you if you plan your race, if I may call it like this, um, more intelligently, then you will have still have stamina towards the end rather than sprinting at the beginning and then kind of collapsing after 10 kilometers. OK, um, the second point here is modules M2 and M3. They are more demanding than M4. This is important for you to understand also if you plan your studies, if you plan your first semester, your second semester, because you have this course list and they have all these wonderful names and titles. But what does it actually mean? Well, Modules M2 and M3 include seminars, and actually they are built around seminars. And a seminar means a lot of work, a lot of interaction, uh, teamwork, and importantly, writing a term paper. I have a whole series of lectures on how to write a term paper, which already tells you that this is obviously not a very easy thing to do, um, especially since most of you are not used to doing it the way as it is required here at ECOS. Um, in my experience, about 90% of my students so far, when they have written something like a term paper, it was basically a collection of data, of information, a very descriptive uh, thing. Um, this is certainly not how you will survive here at ECOS. We will really, really try to help you develop an analytical skill that will have, I guess, the longest half-life of all the skills and knowledge you acquire on our program. That is something that I think once you mastered it will really be with you in a helpful and a positive way for the rest of your life. How to analyze a, a problem systematically, how to structure your approach um, and so on and so on. You know, learning the name of the current South Korean president might be helpful, but 10 years from now, nobody will care. Same goes for uh, the trade volume of North Korea last year or something that might be an interesting information now, but you know, Five years from now, it will all already be a thing of the past. But a skill that you have acquired, a universal skill that you can apply to anything, not just to a very specific problem related to East Asia, this is something valuable. And I think it's also worth investing time and energy into acquiring it. And that's the thing. It will cost you time and energy. So do not underestimate these M2 and M3 courses, please. They are very intense. They are very demanding. The other thing is they are mandatory. So there is no workaround. You must take them. Um, and that means that you should plan your studies around them because they are not offered every semester. Uh, they are offered every second semester. So during your regular period of studies, you have two chances to take uh, those M2 and M3 courses. Um, and that should be perfectly fine and uh, enough. It's just don't wait until the last moment because then you might figure out that you know other things happened and then you know you run into trouble some of my students are really into finishing fast and uh, that's why a little bit of planning ahead might not be a bad idea so that's why my our recommendation is that you take module m2 in the first oh, actually if i would really have to recommend something take it in the third semester to leave the first one really free for language 
and M3 in your second semester, and then you still have the fourth semester still as kind of a backup option for M3 if something happens, you know. Um, so that's it. Uh, bottom line, plan your studies with a focus on M1, M2, and M3. The M4 courses are um, very flexible. There are many of them. Um, some of them are being repeated regularly, like my courses on North Korea, for example, or my course on the history of East Asia. But there are many other courses that we offer in the context of M4 that um, are offered one semester and then never again, or maybe only after three or four years. But usually we have more M4 courses on offer than you can actually attend. This is where you can also, and that's why I included this M4 module into the program, this is where you can really be flexible and study according to um, your individual preferences, which are different. This is one of the great features of the ACOS program that actually each of our students is really different. Yeah, okay, that's the same thing in Japanese studies. There's all, also everyone different, but I mean different in the sense of what your interests are. So some are really into uh, sociology, others are more into history, others are more into economics, uh, others are more into international relations, whatever it is and uh, re religion and whatnot and anthropology and uh, intercultural negotiation there is really something for everybody and um, with this module m4 we actually give you a chance to not just attend these courses according to your interest but also get your credits which of course is something that you should never lose out of sight now speaking of credits i should also say that it's no problem if you take more courses than you actually um have to. I think I mentioned that before. Let me just mention it again. So keep an eye on your credits because at the end of the day, you need 120 of them to finish. But uh, do not limit yourself by saying, uh, I would like to take that course, but I already have all my credits for M4. So what? Take another one. No damage done to anybody. And all that can happen is that you learn a little more. And at the end of the day, this is why you're here, right? Um, yes. And um, so M4 courses is something that I would then build around the existing kind of body of M1, M2, and M3 from a strategic perspective. That's my recommendation to you. And yes, obviously take M5 at the end. Um, it would be really silly and in a way uh, technically impossible to take um, the, uh, the, the master's colloquium in your first semester just to get it done or something, to tick that box. That's not really very helpful. Okay, um, my final slide, just a few general thoughts. I think, especially if you are either on your way towards studying ECOS or in your first semester, why don't you sit down and ask yourself, why am I actually doing this in the first place? Sometimes, you know, things are really path dependent. So you kind of slide into a situation and you don't even know how that happened. But hey, now is the time to take a breath, you know, a cup of coffee, relax and think, hmm, what am I going to do with my life? There is this you know, standard question in job interviews. Where do you see yourself in five years? Yeah, why don't you answer that question for yourself? Where do you see yourself in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years? Where do you want to go? Where do you come from? And how does ECOS fit into this? This is really important because it will help you to answer a few follow-up questions, like how fast should I study? Uh, should I go abroad or not? Uh, what topic should I choose for my master's thesis? Um, everything, right? And um, actually try to write it down just for yourself. You don't have to show this to anybody. Just write it down. It's enormously interesting to revisit these things um, after a year or two or something and then see how your um, attitude, your interests, your perspective maybe changed or how it stayed the same or how you saw things coming earlier and now they happened so either you were prepared or not and took the necessary measures or not um, please consider that uh, getting a degree should certainly be on your list i mean otherwise you know why attending this formal program you could read books but it's just one possible reason for attending the ECOS program right um, of course it could be your professional development it could be your intellectual development it could be widening your perspective it could be, I don't know, interest in uh, particular professors, lecturers that we have. Uh, all these things are perfectly legitimate. Um, 
just write them down and uh, I think that will help you getting more clarity about your own motivation and this will then in turn help you planning and proceeding uh, in your studies. Please make sure to learn as much as possible. I know this sounds, sounds kind of obvious, but as I said, once you are in this thread mill, you know, you, you focus yourself too much on, on ECTS points and forget that they are just a clumsy way of measuring your intellectual progress. And this is why you are here in the first place. You are here to learn something. And of course, we will do the very best we can to help you with this. But as a matter of fact, at the end of the day, it's you who is learning. And it's you who needs to make the necessary effort. Um, and with the right attitude, with a positive attitude, I think you will be more successful. So please try to develop this. At the same time, and that's why I added, uh, as you find desirable, don't overdo it. Yes, of course, there are certain mandatory requirements and there's no way around them. But sometimes less is more. Um, like with many things, there is this law of diminishing return. And um, one unit of extra effort will usually produce less and less and less of an extra benefit. So ask yourself, okay, am I investing enough into this? If the answer is yes, perfectly fine. Do I want to invest more? Okay, but then ask yourself about the cost benefit analysis. I think it's really important that you keep that balance. I'm not trying to discourage you from, from working hard, on the contrary. It's just that in my experience, sometimes if, if um, people are too ambitious, they can ruin it for themselves, really. So finding a good balance is actually a skill, and that's a life skill again. This will not just work for the ECOS program. Be honest to yourself. I think that's one of the major preconditions in order to achieve that. And yeah, it's part of your life, so try to have fun. I really mean it. I mean, the clock is ticking for all of us and you don't really want to waste your time by forcing yourself to do something in a way that you don't like. And then after two or three years, you've done it and then you try to forget it as quickly as possible. This is certainly not what I hope the ECOS program will be for you. Yes, studying ECOS will be hard sometimes and that is okay. I know no pain, no gain is one of these slogans where you people always kind of think, hmm, what is this? Um, but there is some truth in it. But really, it should never be a burden. Studying ECOS should uh, be hard, but not too hard. Um, also, sometimes, really, you have to get off a dead horse once you figure out the horse is actually dead, instead of still trying to ride it and it doesn't move forward. In other words, if you find that ECOS isn't the right program for you, well, that's bad. And it would make me very sad, actually. But then, on the other hand, it's not for everybody. So have the wisdom and the, the inner strength to acknowledge that first to yourself and then take action. And this action could be anything. It could include actually quitting the program rather than torturing yourself and, by the way, everybody else um, towards an kind of kind of an end that is, isn't even near. So um, it is okay to acknowledge that some decisions that we made are not the right ones. It's not okay to just then keep our eyes closed and pretend that we didn't see it. This is really stupid. It's not stupid to make a mistake. It's stupid not to learn from it. Okay. Um, okay, now I really hope that this doesn't apply to too many of you. But again, you know, we've been running this program for such a long time. And in some cases, I really had the uh, impression that it would have been better for everybody, especially for you if um, you know you had pulled the plug earlier. Most of you, however, um, will have a great time here and you will find that you made exactly the right choice. It is a fantastic program. It is a unique program. It's not a perfect program, but we are trying to make it better day by day. By we, I mean the whole ECOS team and all my colleagues here at the Department of East Asian Studies. And that includes you as well. So we, of course, are also very much interested in your feedback, very much interested in your ideas, in your thoughts. Now, not everything will be um, we will be able to do immediately. University is kind of a complicated thing. And of course, it's a matter of resources and of politics and whatnot. But uh, we clearly appreciate all kinds of feedback that you want to give to us. Um, if there are little hiccups, little hurdles uh, to overcome, 
that's what we are there for and we are always there to help you i really appeal to you if you have a problem let us know early on um, sometimes we had issues with language programs you know where some instructors were perhaps a bit tougher um, than necessary or at least our students felt so very often believe me very often this is an easy thing that can be resolved through communication and so on if you if you do not touch it if you hope it will go away by itself then it might actually grow and become a bit more complicated so you have your student representatives you have my ECOS team uh, you see me in my courses I have my office hours just let us know whenever there is a concern you have a problem you're facing a difficulty a hurdle and again we are there uh, to help you okay also very important do not forget to build ties with your peers who are in the same boat this is something that uh, well should be obvious right that as students you hang out together um, with an increasing portion of online learning due to COVID and whatever um, it is a bit more difficult for some of you to get in touch with others so you really need to take active steps uh, to do so I strongly encourage you that's quite important so you have uh, the ECOS team to refer to uh, but you also have your peer group and I hope we all together will be able to make this a great experience for you and I'm really looking forward to um, accompanying you and perhaps leading you also on this journey that uh, will be the ECOS program and that will end with your ECOS degree master's degree and then you know you will all be rich and happy ever after okay with these um, fantastic prospects for the future thank you very much for your attention today and please don't forget to also watch the other youtube videos on various other aspects related to the ECOS program goodbye and thank you